In this video, we will explore the top 25 interview questions commonly asked to staff nurses. These questions are designed to assess both clinical knowledge and interpersonal skills essential for nursing roles. We will also provide insightful answers and tips to help you prepare effectively. Whether you're a seasoned professional or a recent graduate, this guide aims to boost your confidence for the interview process. 1. Can you describe your experience in administering medications and managing potential side effects? In my nursing career, I have administered medications to diverse patient populations, ensuring accuracy in dosages and timing. I conduct thorough assessments before administration, considering allergies and potential interactions. I have monitored patients for side effects, educating them on what to expect and encouraging them to report any unusual symptoms. I maintain an open line of communication with the healthcare team to address any adverse reactions promptly. This proactive approach fosters a safer environment for patients and enhances their overall care experience. Two. How do you prioritize patient care when managing multiple patients with varying acuity levels? In my practice, I assess each patient's needs based on their acuity and potential risks. I utilize a systematic approach, starting with the most critical patients who require immediate attention. Regularly monitoring vital signs and reassessing patients helps me identify any changes in their condition. I also collaborate with my team, delegating tasks based on each member's strengths. Effective communication is vital ensuring everyone is informed about care priorities. This approach allows me to provide safe, quality care while addressing the diverse needs of all patients. 3. What steps do you take to ensure proper infection control and prevent the spread of infectious diseases? Ensuring proper infection control involves adhering to established protocols and guidelines. I start by practicing hand hygiene, using soap and water or alcohol-based sanitizers before and after patient contact. I ensure that all equipment is properly sterilized and that personal protective equipment, PPE, is utilized based on the patient's condition. Educating patients and their families about hygiene practices is essential, as well. Regularly monitoring infection rates and implementing measures like isolation for contagious patients also helps prevent outbreaks. Continuous training and updates on infection control policies keep the team informed and compliant. 4. Describe a challenging clinical situation you faced and how you handled it. In one instance, I encountered a patient experiencing a severe allergic reaction. The situation escalated quickly, the patient was in respiratory distress and showed signs of anaphylaxis. I promptly initiated the emergency protocol by calling for help and administering epinephrine while ensuring the airway was clear. I communicated effectively with the team, providing updates on the patient's status. After stabilizing the patient, I took the time to address their concerns and explain the next steps in their care. This experience reinforced my ability to remain calm under pressure and prioritize patient safety. 5. How do you stay updated on the latest nursing practices and medical advancements? Staying updated on nursing practices and medical advancements is crucial for providing high-quality care. I regularly attend professional development workshops and conferences that focus on evidence-based practices. Subscribing to reputable nursing journals and online platforms allows me to read about the latest research and clinical guidelines. Additionally, I participate in online forums and discussion groups with other healthcare professionals. Engaging in continuous education through certifications and training programs helps me adapt to new technologies and methods, ensuring my skills remain relevant in a rapidly evolving field. 6. How do you communicate complex medical information to patients and their families in an understandable way? When communicating complex medical information, I focus on using clear, simple language and avoid jargon. I often utilize teach back methods asking patients and families to repeat back what they've understood to ensure clarity. Visual aids, such as diagrams or handouts, can also enhance understanding. I encourage questions and take the time to address concerns empathetically, allowing for a supportive environment. Tailoring my approach based on the individual's learning style and cultural background helps make the information more accessible and ensures they feel informed and empowered in their care. 7. Describe a situation where you had to deal with a difficult patient or family member. How did you handle it? Dealing with a difficult patient involved a situation where a patient was upset about a delay in their treatment. They expressed frustration and raised their voice, which created tension in the room. I approached the situation calmly, acknowledging their feelings and actively listening to their concerns. I assured them that I would investigate the issue and provide updates. By maintaining open lines of communication and showing empathy, I was able to de-escalate the situation. Ultimately, the patient felt heard and appreciated the timely follow-up, restoring trust in their care. 8. How do you collaborate with other healthcare professionals to ensure comprehensive patient care? 
Collaboration with healthcare professionals is vital for ensuring comprehensive patient care. I prioritize open communication by participating in interdisciplinary team meetings and engaging in regular updates about patient progress. By utilizing each team member's expertise, we develop holistic care plans that address not only medical needs but also emotional and social aspects. I am proactive in sharing observations and concerns, advocating for patients' needs, and fostering a culture of mutual respect and support. This approach enhances patient outcomes and strengthens team dynamics. 9. What strategies do you use to build rapport with your patients? Building rapport with patients starts with active listening and showing genuine empathy. I make an effort to address patients by their preferred names, which helps create a personal connection. Establishing eye contact and using open body language fosters trust. I also take time to explain procedures and answer questions, ensuring patients feel informed and valued. Sharing a bit about myself, when appropriate, can help bridge the gap and create a more relaxed atmosphere. Consistently following up on their concerns and maintaining open lines of communication helps reinforce the rapport developed. 10. How do you handle conflicts with coworkers or supervisors? Handling conflicts with coworkers or supervisors involves a proactive and respectful approach. I first ensure that I understand the other person's perspective by actively listening. If a disagreement arises, I prefer to address it privately and calmly, focusing on the issue rather than personal feelings. I aim to find common ground and work collaboratively towards a solution. If the conflict persists, I may involve a mediator, such as a supervisor or HR, to facilitate a constructive dialogue. Maintaining professionalism is key, as it fosters a positive work environment. 11. Tell me about a time when you had to make a quick decision in a critical situation. What was the outcome? In a busy emergency room, a patient suddenly went into cardiac arrest. I quickly assessed the situation and initiated CPR while calling for a crash cart. I instructed a nearby nurse to prepare the defibrillator while I continued chest compressions. The team arrived promptly, and we successfully stabilized the patient. After regaining consciousness, the patient expressed gratitude for the rapid response. This experience reinforced the importance of teamwork and clear communication in high-pressure scenarios, as well as the need for quick, decisive action to save lives. 12. How do you approach patient assessment and develop care plans? In my nursing practice, I initiate patient assessment by conducting a thorough review of the patient's medical history and current condition. I utilize systematic assessment tools to gather vital signs, laboratory results, and patient-reported symptoms. Following this, I collaborate with the patient and their family to understand their preferences and concerns, ensuring holistic care. Once I've compiled this information, I develop a personalized care plan that addresses the patient's needs, goals, and potential barriers to recovery. Regular evaluations and adjustments to the care plan are essential, ensuring it remains effective throughout the patient's journey. 13. Describe a situation where you identified a potential medication error. What actions did you take? In a busy shift, I noticed a discrepancy in a patient's medication orders. The dosage for a critical antibiotic was higher than the standard protocol. I immediately double-checked the patient's records and confirmed the error. I alerted the attending physician and discussed the potential implications for the patient's health. We decided to hold the medication until a safer dose was prescribed. I documented the incident thoroughly and reported it to the pharmacy for further review. This experience reinforced the importance of vigilance in medication administration and effective communication within the healthcare team. 14. How do you handle unexpected changes in a patient's condition? Handling unexpected changes in a patient's condition requires swift assessment and prioritization. I first assess vital signs and perform a focused physical examination to identify the issue. Communication with the healthcare team is crucial, as I relay pertinent information and collaborate on interventions. I ensure accurate to update the patient and their family on the situation, providing reassurance and clear instructions. If necessary, I initiate emergency protocols and document all findings and actions taken to maintain accurate records for continuity of care. Flexibility and critical thinking are key during such situations. 15. What steps do you take to ensure and thorough documentation? Accurate and thorough documentation is essential in nursing. I begin by ensuring that I understand the patient's condition and treatment plan before recording any information. I use standardized templates to guide my notes, which helps maintain consistency. I document patient assessments, interventions, and responses in real time to avoid forgetting important details. Regularly reviewing and updating records ensures that all information is current. I also double-check for errors before finalizing entries and collaborate with colleagues to ensure that all relevant details are captured comprehensively. 16. How do you manage stress in high-pressure situations? 
Managing stress in high-pressure situations involves several strategies. Firstly, I prioritize effective time management and organization to ensure tasks are completed efficiently. Deep breathing exercises and brief mindfulness moments help ground me during intense moments. I also rely on strong communication with my team, fostering a supportive atmosphere where we can share concerns and strategies. Regular physical activity and maintaining a healthy diet contribute significantly to my resilience. Lastly, I seek debriefing opportunities after challenging shifts, allowing me to process experiences and emotions constructively. 17. What strategies do you use to maintain work-life balance in this demanding profession? Maintaining work-life balance in nursing involves setting clear boundaries between work and personal life. I prioritize self-care by scheduling regular time for exercise, hobbies, and social activities. I also practice mindfulness techniques, such as meditation, to manage stress. Time management plays a crucial role. I create daily and weekly plans to ensure that I allocate time for both professional responsibilities and personal interests. Engaging with supportive colleagues and discussing challenges helps me cope with the demands of the job while ensuring I remain focused on both my career and personal well-being. 18. How do you handle the emotional toll of caring for critically ill or terminal patients? Caring for critically ill or terminal patients can be profoundly challenging. I prioritize self-awareness and reflection, recognizing my emotions and seeking support from colleagues and supervisors. I engage in regular debriefing sessions with my team, which helps process experiences and share feelings. Establishing strong connections with patients and their families provides a sense of purpose and fulfillment. I also practice mindfulness and self-care techniques, ensuring I maintain emotional resilience while providing compassionate care. Balancing empathy with professional boundaries is essential in navigating these difficult situations. 19. Describe a time when you felt overwhelmed at work. How did you address the situation? When I felt overwhelmed during a particularly busy shift, with multiple patients requiring urgent attention, I took a moment to prioritize my tasks. I quickly assessed each patient's needs and delegated responsibilities to my colleagues, ensuring we worked as a team. I focused on one patient at a time, which helped me manage my stress. Taking deep breaths and staying organized allowed me to maintain clarity. After the shift, I reflected on what could be improved and discussed with my supervisor about potential staffing solutions for peak times. This proactive approach helped alleviate future feelings of being overwhelmed. 20. What self-care practices do you employ to prevent burnout? Self-care is essential for maintaining my well-being and preventing burnout in a demanding profession like nursing. I prioritize regular physical activity, such as jogging or yoga, which helps clear my mind and reduce stress. Mindfulness practices, including meditation and deep breathing exercises, allow me to stay grounded during hectic shifts. I also ensure I take breaks throughout the day to recharge, even if just for a few minutes. Engaging in hobbies outside of work, like reading and painting, provides a creative outlet. Lastly, maintaining a supportive social network is crucial for emotional resilience. 21. What are your long-term career goals in nursing? My long-term career goals in nursing include advancing my clinical skills and pursuing a higher degree, such as a nurse practitioner or clinical nurse specialist. I aspire to specialize in a field that aligns with my passion for patient care and community health. Additionally, I aim to take on leadership roles, mentoring new nurses and fostering a supportive work environment. Ultimately, I want to contribute to improving patient outcomes through evidence-based practice and advocating for healthcare policy changes that benefit patients and the nursing profession. 22. How do you contribute to a positive work environment and team morale? Creating a positive work environment begins with open communication. I actively listen to my colleagues and encourage sharing of ideas and concerns. Recognizing individual contributions fosters a sense of value. I also advocate for team building activities, which strengthen relationships and collaboration. Providing support during challenging times, whether through sharing workload or offering a listening ear, enhances morale. Celebrating small wins together reinforces a sense of achievement, creating a culture of positivity and teamwork that ultimately benefits patient care. 23. Describe a situation where you took on a leadership role. What was the result? In a previous role, I was tasked with leading a team during a critical staffing shortage. I organized daily briefings to ensure everyone was aligned on patient care priorities and delegated responsibilities based on each nurse's strengths. This collaboration increased our efficiency allowing us to maintain high-quality care despite the challenges. I also encouraged open communication, which fostered a supportive environment. As a result, our team not only met all patient care objectives but also improved morale, demonstrating our ability to adapt and thrive under pressure. 24. 
How do you mentor or support less experienced nurses or nursing students? In my role as a mentor, I focus on creating a supportive environment where less experienced nurses and nursing students feel comfortable asking questions and seeking guidance. I provide hands-on training, share my clinical experiences, and encourage critical thinking by discussing various patient scenarios. Regular check-ins help address any concerns they may have, and I promote collaboration by involving them in team discussions. Additionally, I emphasize the importance of continuous learning by recommending resources, workshops, and opportunities for professional development, which can enhance their skills and confidence in nursing practice. 25. What qualities do you think are essential for a successful staff nurse? A successful staff nurse should possess strong communication skills, empathy, and critical thinking abilities. Effective communication ensures clear information exchange with patients and team members, fostering trust and collaboration. Empathy allows nurses to connect with patients on a personal level, enhancing their care experience. Critical thinking is crucial for making informed decisions in high-pressure situations, ensuring patient safety and quality care. Additionally, adaptability and attention to detail are important traits, enabling nurses to handle diverse patient needs and maintain accurate records. As you prepare for your nursing interview, having a solid grasp of these top 25 questions can significantly enhance your confidence and performance. Remember, every interview is an opportunity to showcase your skills, experience, and passion for nursing. By reflecting on these questions and formulating thoughtful responses, you'll be well equipped to make a lasting impression. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more valuable content to support your nursing career journey. Thank you for watching.